Okay, this is the second video in the series on how to create a WordPress uh, website that has content embedded, various uh, Google apps uh, such as Docs, Slides, but more importantly Forms and other content arranged in a way that can help you plan and deliver uh, a quality unit of work that's accessible, that's highly visual and that will engage students. Okay, so first things first, we've created our site. You've given it a name, you've uh, done some basic edits in terms of maybe uh, your front page. Next thing, we're gonna look at uh, naming some of these pages with correct names. And we wanna do that based upon the content points. Now, I work based upon the um, syllabus content points. I arrange it in that manner. I find it the most helpful. Um, and I guess the most logical for students and as you progress. Also, I'd suggest including an assessment page in which you can include the assessment task outline and any relevant samples which you may have. So what we have here is the um, site pages tab in your um, dashboard. Now, let's have a look at this. So we can see here the uh, pages that are given to you in the template. Now we have a home and about a contact and a blog. I would keep your home page, but then I would edit the names of the about contact um, and the contact uh, pages and add in any more pages which you need. But um, keep the blog page if you wish. You can blog if you want. If not, um, yeah, delete it. But let's first of all uh, start editing um, some of the names and maybe we can even look at some of the content. So first things first, now uh, to title these, um, obviously relevant content points, so I'm going to start off with development indicators because I'm uh, developing the site for my next unit. So development indicators, you can see here it's just like editing any normal document. You have both text um, and all your different features, bold, italics, tables, hyperlinks, which are super important, and we'll get to that. But up here, the little plus button is you're inserting your content. So for example, you might have um, some uh, pictures that you want to include. Uh, now, when you include these pictures, that will kind of be like embedded within the text, like a normal um, Google Doc or Word document. So it might be a table, it might be um, something that you've drawn and want to take a picture of and include. Uh, you just add like any other type of, um, I guess, um, yeah, uh, software. So click on add new. We can add by URL. Now it says to, uh, so if we get this for example, I'm not sure what it is, but we'll see. That'll take a little bit to upload. Um, so essentially it's using your memory, your storage of your site. And you can see up here in the top right that you have three gigabyte allowance. I usually go nowhere near that allowance because anything that is hosted online, which is um, your Google Apps for Education, your uh, Google Docs, or anything that is linked by URL, takes no storage. But let's add in this for the purpose of display. So there we go. Add in your text, your images, you can annotate, etc. Now, like I said before, your hyperlinks are super duper important. So for example, uh, you have an activity. Now it might be a worksheet that you already use. You might have it on Google Docs. Previously you might have printed it, shared it on Google Classroom and that type of thing. So please complete this worksheet. Okay. Now what you then need to do is highlight what you want to be hyperlinked. It's all about the links. Links are super powerful. They take you places. And taking you places is exploration. And learning takes place through exploration. Well, that's what I think anyway. There's my philosophical take on it all. Um, now, we have to link this to something. So let's not share any of that, but let's go to my unit, relevant unit. And I might like them to complete, uh, let's say, this particular read or look at this particular um, thing. Now, yeah, that's not too good. Let's find a 
a worksheet possibly. Let's go to resources. Here we go. Uh, relief and gradient, two-wheel perspective. Here we go. It's a worksheet. Now this might be something that uh, you want them to keep. Um, so giving them, you can obviously uh, uh, print it out if you so wish. But even things that I print out, I still include, especially for those students who might have been absent. Now, we need to share the link. So we click on share. You can change the editing access. Now, if you only wish for students within your class and St. Columba to, to view and complete these documents, leave it as view only. But hey, if you're feeling as though you want to share all your excellent resources with the world, remembering that unless you uh, give your site a password, that anyone can access it. And for me, you know what, if it benefits some poor student that's got a crap teacher who doesn't do anything, doesn't give them any resources, then I say that's a good thing. Because in the end, it's about the kids anyway. But for now, let's just leave it as view only. And for St. Columba, copy that link. Copy. We go back to your... Um, dashboard, your yeah, WordPress, and we copy in the link. So now we can see that we have that hyperlinked. Now students obviously read that, it says please complete this worksheet. If I were to click on that, let's see if that works. Open it up in a new document, a new tab, and there we have that worksheet. Easy. Okay, what are some of the other things that we can do on a page? Now I've shown you how to include a YouTube video, but for example, let's look at one that I will include and one that I would like students to watch, possibly in their own time, um, or possibly in class, and then assess, and I'd like to assess their knowledge and understanding, and that might be formative, it might be summative, and the way that we do that is we include the source, so in this case a TED talk from the Bhutanese Prime Minister about uh, its nation's efforts towards um, development. I would firstly copy that in to my page. Copy, copy the link. As we said before, uh, WordPress recognises uh, a YouTube and will embed that video. Okay. Let's just give the kids a few more instructions so that they know what to do. Whoops, let's do that. Uh, what have we done here? Let's redo. Uh, undo. Okay, anyway. So it seems as though what I've done is I have deleted. Oh, no, it's still there. Sometimes your YouTube videos will disappear, but it should still be there. Okay, but for now I might ask them to watch the video below, then complete the embedded Google Form. Now Google Form, great. I love Google Forms for a couple of reasons. Number one, super easy to collect data of all sorts. Data, fancy word in education, uh, that's not all that fancy in reality, we've been doing it for years, but can we make that easier? Can we make it more efficient, more streamlined? And there's one uh, piece of technology that has, if anything, revolutionized the way I work, and that's Google Forms. Now, let's just grab a random Google Form. Now this one's a bit different, but it, um, you know, we've got the Google Form, you can edit that as you so wish. Uh, you can obviously include all types of questions. I'm not going to go into details now, but um, obviously you've got your questions. Now how do we embed that? How do we not just have a link? Because links are cool, but embedded data and embedded resources are amazing. So we click on send. Now we've got different ways to send this. We can send this via email. We can send it as a link, but even more powerful than that is we can embed it. Now, we embed what's called an iframe. Now, don't worry too much about the, the technical aspects. So simply copy that um, piece of text. We then come back to our page 
and this is where we can get a little bit more fancy. This is your visual editing, and if you feel advanced, you can edit in what's called HTML. HTML is uh, obviously the coding, or the, I don't know what the proper term is, I have to ask, software design student, but uh, this is where we paste in that detail. Now, this here, when we click on visual, might automatically show that form. It might still look like it does now. But once you're finished, most of the time, apart from sometimes where there might be a few issues, once we click update, which is essentially like saving the progress you've made on that page, and then view that page, we have that Google form embedded. So students can simply watch the video, respond to that um, Google form. You might wish to give it for homework. You might wish to flip this. You might wish to say, hey, um, can I get you to do this for homework? Complete the Google form. And what we'll do is we'll review, we'll look through as a class at the data, at your opinions, at what you, uh, at what you said. So this is where we can look at the responses. Now, in this case, we've got summary uh, and individual responses. Now, if you select in your Google form up here, uh, collect email addresses, you can see who said what, which is really quite powerful. But for now, we can obviously see a summary of some feedback that my students gave of a previous uh, fieldwork experience. But if this were to be obviously relevant to this video, it might have a series of questions that I created and then maybe something higher order towards the end. And because Google Forms allows different types of questions, everything from multiple choice, paragraph, short answer, check boxes, drop down, you can even get students to upload a file. That file can be of many types. Um, but of course it requires uh, signing in and uh, collecting uh, emails. So as I was saying, multiple choice, all types of things. In your form you can also include images, title the description, add in a video if you want, uh, and add sections within your form. So that's our first page. We've learned that we can uh, give our page a new title. We can include uh, text, pictures, links, videos, and embedded Google Forms.